Good evening, folks. Uh, my name is Kai, and with me I have the uh, the voice of the East. I got Ski Sonic with me. Oh shit, we're live. Yeah, we're live. <laughs> 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 we're live. Uh, so, um, thank you for join, uh, tuning in to another wonderful episode of Alpism Radio. Um, and tonight, um, I got some treats for you guys. First of all, I got Ski Sonic with me. Whoop whoop. Okay, I assume that everyone out there went with, with, with me. Okay, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see, uh, hear. It's good to be on the show with you again, my friend. How are things going? Oh man, it has been a freaking long day for me, but I really don't need to talk about that. I'm just happy to be here, kicking back on Alphism Radio, my uh, original talky Street Fighter thingy home. <laughs> um. And then, of course, uh, we got um, um, a respected uh, uh, third strike player on here, uh, and uh, we got Face NC. What's going on, man? What's going on, man? How are things be going here. for you? What did you say? How are things going for you? Doing good, doing good. A little tired, but, you know, it's all right. Been up all day playing third strike. <laughs> okay, so, you know, you have it for PSM, right? Mm -hmm. And you haven't gotten it for Xbox Live yet. No, not yet, but I'm getting it here in the next day or two. Just a matter of time of getting around to it. Uh, oh, 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 really? That's that's too bad for you, bro. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so you got a full 24 hours with it, so let's hear it. Yeah, it's um, it's good. It's really good. It's um, it's a little disappointing in some in some respects, but but overall, I'd say it's it's a really good game. Really good port. Okay. Uh, so list a few things that you really like about it, and then one, uh, list a few things that can use some improvement. Um, well, I, I, I mean, the main thing is just the fact that it's arcade perfect. It feels a little bit faster than arcade speed to me still, but, um, it's way better than PS2 speed, so, uh, that's a huge, huge, uh, plus for the game, and, uh... I actually kind of dig the the trials. They're a li some of them are a little goofy, but I, I like the idea and the 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 effort. And oh, and the, the the filters. The filters actually look really good. I was really impressed at how good the filters look. And you know, the uh, trials were actually designed by a great great guy, special man. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that guy, Ari. Right? I heard they I were too hard. Yeah, I heard, <laughs> I heard, I heard, I heard uh, the ones he designed were were too hard for the for the developers, and they actually had to tone tone them down a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised. Some of those are incredibly intricate trials, you know. Uh, yeah. I, there's, I mean, some of them you wouldn't even necessarily know how to do. They have the cool uh, Tekken-esque feature of uh, demonstrating the combos, if I'm not mistaken. Right? Um, I, I don't think so, no. I, I mean, if they did, I missed it. I was looking them up on YouTube cause for the ones that I couldn't figure out last night. <laughs> huh. Well, if I'm... Wrong, then whatever. But they're yeah, they're out there at least. Yeah, yeah. It, it's probably in there. I probably just missed it. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's hard for me to say at this point. Um, I didn't get a chance to do any of the trials, but I uh, at home. But I did uh, do a little bit at E3. So I thought I remembered that feature. If it's not in there, sorry, but uh, you can definitely find them online. But it's the trials are yeah. Like that that was the point of what I was saying. Like some of those trials are like you wouldn't even. No, I'm pretty sure yeah. that those. I'm pretty sure that there's a video that there's a video in the game. Some of those trials, like you look at it and you're like, "Well, how do you like uh, <laughs> slam dance yeah. him out of the air, right?" And yeah. I, I think yeah. I, I think I didn't know how to do it until I watched the video. Yeah, yeah, that, some of them were really weird. You're like, oh, I didn't even know that comboed. I I was yeah. talking to Exodus last night. You know, Exodus, famous third strike player east coast been around forever and he was seeing, he was talking about combos he's like i don't i've never seen that combo before in my life so i don't know what's going on here so uh if they call uh as they well actually as Seth Kalen referred to it so affectionately a love letter to the fans uh would you would you circle yes i love you back yes no uh, <laughs> maybe i checked the maybe box yeah hey you will you can't well, write in there's no right. What do you think this is? The Iowa strong. We still gotta wait. We still gotta wait a little bit. You know, like there's there's all these little rumors going around about input lag. I personally haven't felt anything, but uh, you know, I want I want to get the uh, the final the final word one way or the other. Get someone to do like you know the old LED test like NKI did with uh, Super Turbo and uh, what was that Capcom Classics Collection Three. 
or two or whatever it was. Uh, I, I want to see that. You know, I um I got the PSN version, mm-hmm. uh, and I played I played like five or ten games, mm-hmm. and I got the Xbox version, and I played like ten or fifteen games, and I think I think uh, the Xbox version was up a little bit better. Now I don't have a ton of like okay, well I have a fair amount of arcade experience to compare it to, but it's not incredibly mm-hmm. recent. Um, yeah. One of the first guys I was talking about it was Fubar Duck, and he's pretty reputable. He actually owns yeah. an arcade that has their strike for sure. So, you know, he's, he's going to be somebody to listen to. And likewise, Eris, who's also just as reputable in the community, if not more so, and he was actually going out to Super Arcade playing it live. But, you know, I think it's important to note that, like you said, it's, as of right now, it's still incredibly an incredibly good port. And, you know, if, if there is a problem, then what we're seeing is a difference between those two versions right off. At least that is the, the inclination, so hopefully that will be one of the things that will be patched before we even get into the what needs to be patched discussion. Let's stay on what's good about it first. Yeah, uh, absolutely. One more thing I wanted to throw out there, though. Um, when I did play... Um, I've, I've, been, I've been telling the story a lot. When I played it at E3, I'm pretty sure I was playing it on the Xbox. I got the... Necro number five trial. Yeah. Pretty, pretty quick. Levels. Now, I played Necro in Third Strike for like um, probably two or three years, and I didn't play the game like very. Well, I actually played a lot of Third Strike now that I think about it. I used to drive an hour to Galleon's house. <laughs> um, and you, should, you should all go oh, to yeah. season Everybody should go to season Yes, definitely. Season. And I attended school. First, I attended school in, well, I attended school in uh, Ohio. I spent a, um, uh, a semester in London, and then I had to play, I like how I'm saying this, I had to play Third Strike, because that was <laughs> what I was playing. So I had to play it. You know, I was like, hey guys, where's the MVC2 machine? And I was like, there's one in London. And I went to it, and both sides were broken, and there was nobody to play. So I, I had to, you know, suck it up, play Third Strike. I played Yun and Chun for, for that whole duration. When I came back, I was like, you know, that's cool. I've had my time with this game. I am just going to play Necro now because I think he's a really sick character. And uh, the guy Sugiyama and totally inspired me. So I've been playing the game on PS2, obviously, when I got back. Cause there's not a lot of arcades in my area. And I would look at, like, videos of Sugiyama hitting that, like, you know, the, the, the elbow combo, six elbows on you know, Urian and whoever else. And, you know, seeing, like, Pino Abis, uh seven, eight, whatever things, doing it too, right? And I'm like, I I have full faith in myself as a player and the ability to, like, hit combos at least, like, one time. Once, you know, like, I have pretty good timing, I have pretty good dexterity, like, I'm not going to hit it in a match necessarily, but if I try it in training mode, I should be able to hit it. And I'm pretty sure that I actually never hit the full six, full six uh, elbows, like, ever, in my time and trying it in training mode. So that was kind of discouraging. And I got that combo at E3, like, in, like, 10 minutes. And also, I played um, my third strike game online on Xbox, 3SOE, and the first thing that I hit, or the first time that I tried the crouch light kick hit confirm with Necro, it was, like, easy peasy. Like, I was like, whoa, it really... You really can hit confirm. That was one of those things that people were like, yeah, man, he does good things. Like, you can hit confirm in the super. And I'm like, that's, you can, but it's not that tough. But it was, like, pretty easy. And I was playing online. So those two things stuck out for me um, as far as, like, speed is concerned. I didn't really try too much on the uh, 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 PSN, but, uh, you know, everything was coming out as well. Yeah, I haven't played much offline to be honest with you so I mean it, all, any and all speed discussion is, is tainted by that you know it's just like it, online still was online so it's like oh, I've played a little bit offline mostly just the trials and everything so just gotta figure out how it feels 100% yeah it would have been nice if we had gotten to vet that net play a little bit before because you know everybody um, that played it offline I think at Evo and at E3 was you know, just giving pretty much glowing reviews, and even Fubar mm-hmm. back then was saying like it definitely just feels like arcade. Um, 
now, you know, you got to play it online. You got to see what's up. But it feels really good. Obviously, it has GGPO. You see the big blue logo. <laughs> yeah. The That's GGPO. cool. Right when you turn it on. Yeah. How, how are you liking the GGPO glitches? Oh, they're 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 great. Let me tell you, all of those like double KOs, <laughs> like getting a KO and then KO again five seconds later. I yeah, I mean it's. I, go ahead. Oh, it's just I was saying. Uh, it's just uh, it feels like GGPO third strike. You know, it's not um, uh, a revolution in netcode. I don't think it feels. If you've played third strike on GGPO, it it feels pretty much the same. Maybe a little bit better on uh, long distance connections, but uh, but yeah, I mean it, it's it is a very faithful uh, representation of what GGPO can do on a console. It's pretty impressive. I was pretty surprised, though. I kind of, uh, I kind of thought that GDPO being implemented at the crown level would, you know, work out a little bit better. Yeah, so but, right, to be honest with you. Yeah, but I guess you know, at the end of the day, it is still a port, and it's not like it was actually built natively mm. in the game from the ground up. So I guess uh, that's kind of a misnomer for me to say. Like at the ground level, it's probably more. Uh, as deep as at the top level as it could be, so this is pretty much one of the reasons why everybody's buying it because we really want GPO to be in future games to actually be built within the <laughs> within the code from the jump. Yeah. I think that we would see yeah, less, less of things like that. Yeah, when it, when it's good, when you have a good connection, it feels really good. It's not you know it's not it's not uh it doesn't feel like local play. I'm not going to say it's like that or anything. It's still you can still tell it's online, but it does feel it feels better than any netcode I've felt previously. But when it's bad, it's it's really 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 bad. I would almost prefer like Street Fighter 4 style slowdown than like teleporting characters and everything. Reminds me of HDR a little bit. It does get a little excessive. I I noticed that. I was like, um we it's you're not even really seeing what's happening. You just see like punches just like taken back <laughs> uh, repeatedly. Yeah. You don't know what's happening, and then the, and it's weird because I feel like even when you play, maybe this is just unique to Third Strike. Cause I didn't play a lot of Third Strike on the original GGPO interface on PC, but it feels like I would see it. I see more of it, but maybe it's because there's more frames of animation and whatnot. Yeah, I don't think the knows. sounds would play as much. You know, it's it's kind of disorienting when you play on a bad connection in that respect because you get the double sound glitches. It's really really. Mm-hmm. Weird. Um, I wanted to ask you. You know, um, so okay, so you know, Third Strike Online is out. Um, okay, so Street Fighter. There's a lot of people out there that got their start in Street Fighter Four. Instead of Street Fighter 2, what should be their mindset when going into the game? Um, well, the, the number one thing you need to know is that fireballs and shoryukens are way less powerful in Third Strike than they are in a game like Super Turbo or Street Fighter 4. So because those two major tools are taken away from the majority of the cast, I mean, they have them, but they're not really useful, um, you really have to prioritize poking and spacing and footsies and and all of those things are in Street Fighter 4 so so it is capable to move your skill set from one game to the other you just have to know which sk- which skills to prioritize in which game um, yeah you really have to prioritize footsies and whiff punishing in a game like Third Strike and and uh, and zoning with your pokes not with projectiles necessarily so when you start the game and your first inkling is to throw a fireball, you need to really start, you know, you got to start saying, ah, hold on. Yeah, yeah, it's like your first, if, if it's your very first game ever, um, I guess round one fight, I would uh, backdash and hit crouching strong. That pretty much is the entire cast, that's what I would do. Build a yeah, don't forget and, that, uh, don't forget that, that's important. Mm-hmm. You build meter whiffing normals in this game, it is, woo, yeah. feels like Street Fighter. That's the only yep. reason it feels like Street Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whiffing, bring back whiffing normals for meter. They're bringing it back for Street Fighter Cross Tekken, right? Yeah, I think it's going to be necessary in that game. It seems like it's going to be pretty meter dependent. Mm. Yeah, pretty that's cool. the best thing. Bring that back. Yeah, uh, I mean, certain characters can definitely use projectiles. Like, obviously, like, Remy, 
has got a really strong uh, projectile game if you can utilize charge partitioning. Um, Akuma has a great projectile game with his air fireball. He can actually zone really well and control a lot of space that way. Um, Ryu can use his fireball, but it's more as a um, long-range poke than as a uh, a zoning tool. You would use it like right outside of like sweep range. You'd throw fireballs and try to punish with normals that way. Usually with an EX fireball because it'll push. It'll make them. It'll send them flying and push them toward the corner, which is where Ryu is really powerful because you know if you're using Denjin, you can get Denjin combos. If you do Shinsho, he gets his most powerful Shinsho follow-ups there. It's that's that's where he wants to be. All right. Don't throw fireballs at Chun when she has meter. Just don't. Do yeah, it. don't do that ever. Unless you're Remy and you have a full meter, because Remy can throw a boom, and if Chun tries to super through it, Remy can just uh, rip a uh, flash kick super, and he'll actually stuff Chun super with his flash kick super. Is that the good super, with Remy? Uh, no, I would say super one is. But shout outs to Fat Bear who hit me with that when I was out in California. <laughs> Taught me that. So, um, yep. when you knock someone down in Street Fighter 4, a lot of the cast, the first uh, inkling is to do a cross-up. Good or, good or bad thing in Third Strike? Um, most of the time, no. Uh, certain characters like Ken, Ken has a really strong cross-up, but if you get predictable with it, it can be punished just like anything in any fighting game. But Third Strike seems to be more... Um, Quick to punish repetitiveness, so uh, yeah, your 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 first inkling when you knock someone down should just be to slowly push them toward the corner, and and uh, do a safe pressure game on their wake up. You can you can stuff most shoryus in this game, so you don't necessarily have to worry about someone mashing shoryuken on their wake up. If you do a meaty normal, you can stuff most shoryukens in this game. Um, so uh, yeah, just just. Do a safe, high-low mix-up as best as you can, and uh, just try to pressure them toward the corner because the corner is extremely important in third strike, just like it is in in any fighting game. But most characters get most of their damage when they're right next to the other character, so obviously the corner is uh, incre- incredibly important. You, have to, you almost have to treat it like a like a wall in a 3D fighting game, you know, where if like a tech match, if someone is is pinned against the wall, it's 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 a very uh, pressure-filled situation for them. They need to try and get away from it as, as quickly as possible. It's the same thing in Third Strike. All right, so for people that don't know or are struggling to figure out, like, just give us some examples of safe pressure. You know, Are safe jumps similar to what people are used to in probably Street Fighter 4 and that kind of thing? Mm, yeah. Well, um, backdashes are not invincible in Third Strike like they are in Street Fighter 4, so uh, safe jump option select, so, you know, like doing like crouching jab sweep, don't really work in third strike. I guess you could technically do some of them, but the jabs are usually uh, slow enough that it doesn't really work exactly. But um, safe jumps do exist, but they're uh, incredibly um, situation dependent and not normal. Not not it's not your usual pressure. You would not go for a safe jump setup normally um, because of the parry for the mo- for the most part. Parry would negate most of them. Uh, so the safest thing you could do would be to just like uh, maybe go for a standard meaty and then throw, like you know, say crouching short throw, and then the next time you do crouching short and then you see what the opponent does because crouch checking exists in this game just like it does in Street Fighter 4, but you get a crouching jab rather than a crouching short like you do in Street Fighter 4 when you crouch tech in this game. And crouching jab by the entire cast can be parried high or low, so. If, if they go for a crouch tech, if they're expecting throw and they go for a crouch tech and you parry any direction whatsoever, you're going to get that parry. And if you're quick enough, you can you can punish very, very hard. You know, do short, short super, do with Chun, do back fierce super. I mean, every character in the game, not every, sorry, all of the good characters in the game have very easy ways to take 30 to 40% life off of you. And this is like... The, the top half of the cast, not not just the top three that everyone whines about, like Chun Yun and Ken. Got a little static when you Ian. Who's in? Is that? I think. Okay, I think we're good. Live radio, folks. Live radio. I think it's uh, <laughs> it's you, Face. Uh, oh great, it might be my mic. I don't know what's going on with it. You sound like a uh, transformer. 
Oh, it's a Skype, Skype, Skype plug or whatever. whatever. I don't know. I it don't was working know. perfectly when we was testing it. You should definitely try it because you do not even sound like a good transformer right now. You sound like a transformer. Give me a second. It's not Optimus, yo. Like you. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Are we in there? I can't hear you. Yeah. This is much better. Amazing. It's probably just uh, some voltage issues or something. We'll let you know if it kicks back up. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I forgot what the point was. No, he made a good point. He did, he made uh, some really nice points about. Uh, uh, safe pressure. So why don't you move on and talk a little bit about uh, universal overheads. Would you want to integrate those into your OK game? How do you do that? How do they differ? Okay, well, I didn't hear the entire question because my for some reason the headphones on my headset didn't come back, but I think you're asking me about universal overheads and how they work exactly. Yeah. Um, well, universal overhead in this game is done with the same inputs that you would do with focus attack, medium punch and medium kick, and everyone in the cast has it, and it does hit overhead, as it would you know imply. Um, they are, for the most part, safe on block. Certain characters can punish them, like Ken can punish it with a reversal super most of the time. Um, but they're all, uh, you can link into super off of them for the most part as well. They're, um, they're all character and spacing dependent, though, so it's not like a, a 100% free setup. But I know, like, Ken, for the most part, he, he'll do a setup like, um, I think it's like short, short jab. And then do universal overhead, and at that range, if you if you do short jab and you block it, and he does universal overhead, and it hits you, that's the exact range that he needs to do a, a super art three right after it, and it, it'll hit and and do that. It's a very safe way of because the worst case scenario, you're going to get hit out of the air and you'll go flying away. Or if the guy is really good, he can parry it, and he can. You do have trip guard. It, it works just like a jump attack in that respect, and he can. Uh, uh, hit you low, but um, that's that's, a, that's an incredibly difficult thing to do. Actually, um, you probably if they parry it, you're probably going to get thrown before you get hit low. Um, but yeah, it's it's a really good safe. If it's kind of like like a, uh, I remember hearing a Rockefeller uh, commentary once where it was like, if you don't know what to do as a top player, just do a, just do leap attack. You know, because it's safe and you, and you know, you won't have, you won't get in trouble. And you can't be thrown, obviously, because you're off the ground. It does have uh, startup frames, though, so you can be thrown during the startup of it. But as soon as you get off the ground, you're fine. So it's a good, it's a, it's a, it's a low risk, low reward offensive counter to throws. Unlike uh, Shoryuken, which would be a high risk, high reward offensive counter to throws. You know, if you think a throw is coming and you don't want to rip Shoryuken like you would do in the Street Fighter 2 game, you just hit universal overhead and you'll get you know maybe two percent damage you know you'll you'll take or you will damage the guy for two percent but you'll still get him to back off of you a little bit yeah i've noticed that it's it's incredibly i've always noticed that it's incredibly character specific and you know ken seems to have a really good one uh dudley also comes to mind mm -hmm. yeah one, dudley's is great some characters like uh, Necro and even Chun Li, they really have to kind of work to set those up, and, uh, and it seems like there's for characters like that, there's fairly specific setups, mm -hmm. but they're still hard enough to recognize that you can, you know, you can legitimately use them. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So one, one one question I almost forgot to ask you, uh, you know, on the last show I had Flash Metroid, you know, fun guy, it was great having him on the show. I plan on having him back real soon. Uh, <laughs> I did not know he was a third strike hater. All right. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. I did not know. He that, the game. I did not know that Wizard was a third strike hater. I thought he hated the CBS too, but he don't particularly care for third strike either. So they're saying yeah. that in this game, that uh, you know, Red Perry it makes it where you know, um, you know, you can't really do any combos in the game as far as if they're on block because you can just get Red Perry and they'll kill you. Uh, so nothing is ever totally, you know, there's no such thing as safe offense. You know, you, you know, you know, you do something on someone and you think it's safe. There's nothing that's safe. You know, they can, you know, repair anything. You know? So
so what do you say about that? Do you, is, it being, is, is it something that is true or is it overblown? Or what's, how do you feel about that? Well, they're, they're not false in the sense that they're, they're not factual. You know, like, like the, the statements they made are true. Everything in the game can be red parried. Every, there is no safe offense in the game. Everything, you know, if, 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 if you were a perfect being, you could parry everything and never take any damage ever. But you could say the same thing about Street Fighter 2. If you were the perfect being, you could show you can every move in the, you would show you can every poke in the game and you'd never take any, any damage ever. Obviously, a parry is much lower risk, lower risk than a sure you can is. And maybe that's the gripe. But, um, but yeah, as far as red parries go, um, most block strings in the game are at most three hits. Like, I can't think of many others that are much longer than that anyway. I don't think the frame data really works out to allow an actual block string um, longer than three hits. Like, a, like, 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 like short jab short with, with the Shotos is pretty much as long as I can think of. I don't really think of much else. Um, and, and if you played against a top player and you did short jab short on them, they would probably red parry it. It's, it's not a difficult thing to do, and you would get punished for it. But short jab short is also long enough that you can confirm the fact that they're blocking and just stop hitting the button. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not necessarily a thing. It's not, like, it's not, of course it's not a s safe offense, but it's just a, you just reset the situation. You just do short jab and then go to a throw or universal overhead and go into super, which is, you know, which is what we were just mentioning. Um, but yeah, at, at, at medium to high level play, red parrying doesn't even really come into effect at all. Most of the time at that level, the only time you're ever going to see a red parry is either accidental or they're going to red parry a super. You know, they, they block the first hit of a super and they red parry the rest of it. And, and then do a combo. But you were going to get punished because you did a block super anyway, so they're just styling for the most part. It's only at the extreme high levels of the game that red parrying comes into effect on that level of, of, of red parrying things like, like strong, fierce Ken's target combo, doing strong, fierce, red parrying the second hit. I mean, that takes like quite a bit of effort to recognize the fact that you've been hit with, you've, you've blocked a strong, and the guy's going to hit fierce, and, and go, going into that. Because the guy could just go strong, nothing, crouching short. And if you tapped forward, if you let go of block and tapped forward, you're going to get hit with that crouching short, which could then go into a super, you know, which is 30% damage or so. Um, because... Uh, sorry, I guess I should have explained this before. There's no um, absolute guard in this game, like there is in every other Street Fighter game ever. Where, like, absolute guard is if uh, if a guy starts a block string on you and you are blocking the first hit of it, and it's a it's a tight block string. There's no gaps in it whatsoever. You can actually let go of the stick, and the the game will block all of it for you. If you let go of the stick in any way, shape, or form in third strike, you get hit. So, um, so yeah, it it. it by going to a red parry, that in and, of, in and of itself is a risk. Not only a risk of that you might miss the red parry and take the, the hit of the string, but the risk of your opponent might not do that string and might go a different direction. Like it's just, but that's all just mind games, and, and that's that's what third strike is 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 the the high low the rapid fire high low mix up mind game. That's all that is there. And I mean, I, I can understand I can understand not liking that mind game, but it's not a matter of good or bad, I don't think. Okay, you uh, know, um, great explanation on that, thank you. Um, you know, so, you know, we talked, we talked a little bit off layer, uh, actually we talked quite, quite a bit off air, and one hmm. of the more interesting questions that I just spontaneously came up with is that, you know what, if a Street Fighter 4 player comes into uh, to Third Strike Online, um, you, you already gave a lot of great pointers. Um, what is there a, first of all how you know the, the one other the, one, other, one other issue is the tiers um i don't mm -hmm. think there's a more controversial game as far as tiers as far as street fighters concerned than third strike because they because all i hear is about chun 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 chun, chun. and i want to say is i mean is it oh, is again is this something that's overblown where maybe it's Factually true, but it's not giving you the whole picture. Um, 
it, because the way I'm thinking is that Chun is very good, but I don't think it's like any character can just come up there and play her and then just dominate. I think that it takes work and he takes know how, and and the BS that Chun can do will you will only inquire on a high level anyway. But if you're if you're that good to play somebody that's high level, you will know how to deal with it. I mean, am I correct? Uh. Yeah, for the most part, I guess. Um, I mean, Chun and Yun are by far and away the two best characters in the game. There's not really much argument about that. I wouldn't even... I'm a Chun player, and I wouldn't... If someone told me my character was cheap, I could only agree with them. She is. She's very cheap. But, um... Uh... She also, I think, she's a very simple character design. She doesn't have very good anti-airs. Her, her main pokes are low forward and back fierce, and they're extremely good pokes. Like, the, like back fierce is active for, like, half a second, it seems, and low forward can be canceled all the way through its animation. Um, but if you think about a character design that only really revolves around two pokes and a Kara throw, um, it's pretty easy to work out a game plan to get around that for most characters in the game. So Chun is not a character that you can pick up as a day two player and expect to win games against anyone who's actually thought about their game plan and going through with it. Um, a more likely character that someone would whine about is is Ken, because Ken has fairly simple combos, very good pokes, very good pressure game, very good cross-up game, and um, is is much more. It's a much more well-rounded character design. Like if it, he's the he's, he is the best first character to play in the game, I think. He, if you learn Ken, you could then translate those abilities to every character in the game. Um, no problem. Um, but Yun combos are, are relatively difficult. Um, I mean, not, not something that would take you longer than a day in training mode, I don't think, but they're, they're, they're not something you're going to pick up, and, and gainage and pressure is going to take you much longer to learn than the combo itself. So Eon is not a good starter character, and Chun is, is one of those characters who, if you could actually hit confirm low forward super, yes, you will get wins that you probably, you know, don't deserve, if you want to use air quotes around that. You know, you'll beat players that are better than you, but you're not going to be anyone who is, who is actually thinking about the game and is going through it and is thinking about the fact that, hey, Chun has a really good low forward and a really good back fear, so I'm going to try and stay away from those moves. She, you, you, it just won't happen for the most part. Okay, okay. And, um, by the way, you know, <laughs> some of the Flash said, you know, I was going to play with Q, you know, because so, I think he's a very interesting mm -hmm. says, Okay, you can go play with Q, you can go die, too. <laughs> <laughs> Q is a uh, funny character. He's he's actually really good. He does a lot of damage. He, if he gets a hit on you, he hurts a lot. The problem is... um. He, all of his moves have really, really, really low priority. So um, he has to be really careful about when he presses buttons, and if those buttons hit, he has to make them count every time because he doesn't get a lot of opportunities to get hits. So um, you have to be really good with hit confirm, you know, like, like hit confirming your entire combo all the way through and, and being comfortable with the execution. There are some incredibly high execution stuff, like he can... Uh, like, he could super jump cancel his command grab to make it throw invincible, but that's, like, way beyond the realm of this discussion. But for the most part, his, his execution is relatively simple. It's a command grab. It's a, it's a three-hit combo into super. It's, it's not super stuff. It's just a matter of figuring out how to get his hits in and making them count once you do. Um, so, yeah. He's not, I wouldn't say he's the best starter character, but there's, there are others that are worse to, to start off with, I think. So, um, Makoto, Dudley, and um, Abuki, how mm -hmm. is, if anyone plays any of those three characters, how hard would them to adapt to the Third Strike version? Mm. Makoto would be relatively simple, I think, to switch over. Um, some normal differences, like like I know like Makoto and AE, her jumping fierce is like really good, really good jumping, really good air to air move. Um, in third strike, you would use jumping roundhouse instead. Um, but for the most part, it would work, mm. no problems. You you would you'd have to 
change how you um, did her mix up a little bit. I think she's a lot faster in third strike. You have to you have to think a lot faster in third strike as a Makoto player than you do in AE. Just because um, in AE she has to play much safer. She can't go as crazy as she does. Um, Dudley, I think, also would be relatively simple. He's got the same basic jump arc. His jump ins work basically the same. His combos are, f for all intents and purposes, the same. I mean, you know, minor differences here and there, but they would still work. Um, Ibuki is is much different in Third Strike. None of that um, none of that vortex stuff works in Third Strike at all because Perry negates it. Um, so like doing like anti or doing like knockdown cross up. Kunai stuff that just doesn't apply at all in the game. She has to play um, a much more crazy mix-up or or like incredibly safe. Those are the only two really game styles you can. You, she has to go like balls out crazy gimmick mix-up or play like like get a knockdown and then on the guy's wake up do down back. Like she can't really do much because her pokes aren't really good. Um, She's got. Uh, she still has her spin kick pressure. That's still really um, decent. But again, you have to worry about red parry. I mean, you can't do multi-hit specials necessarily and expect them to be safe. So, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, who was it? Just Rob in the chat told me. Yeah, her uh, Makoto's command grab is is much better in third strike. It doesn't have as much. Uh, Recovery as it does in super or in AE, I should say. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it's not it's not safe on whiff, but it, it's it's uh, it's a lot better. It's got more range. It's got less recovery. So, uh, yeah, Makoto is a, a lot a much better character in Let third shot than she is in AE. Let me ask you a question about Makoto. Is um, and I know I should probably get what's his face to to answer this, but why do you think that Capcom would left? That's an obvious. I know that one of the things I I noticed about Makoto is that her grab range in the Karakus is nowhere near as good as it is in Third Strike. And what do you think is Capcom's reasoning why this move is 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 such is so um it is so gimped in this because you know it looks like that like when she went from Super to AE they look like they buffed almost every aspect of her game except that. Yeah, I have no idea what their uh, thought process with uh, Makoto was with AE, to be honest with you. Um, uh, I don't understand why you would make a command grab so bad in a game that has relatively safe reversals in it. Um, uh, very low blocks done and very... Yeah, I, I, I really don't understand why you would make her command grab that bad. Uh, apparently... In the first version, in the first like alpha versions of Super, yeah. that Makoto was in, she was she was by far and away the top character in the game. So maybe that's the reason. Maybe they know something I don't. Mm. Um, but like, yeah. The, oh, uh, I guess another thing. If you're going as a Street Fighter Four Makoto player to uh, Third Strike, or sure, you can. In Third Strike, is bad. It's really bad. Um, don't use it outside of combos for the most part. If you're going for it outside of combos you're and, and you know what you're doing, it's probably as a, like a, a gotcha type of thing. It's not an anti-air at all, really. You need to use, like, air-to-air uh, -air normals or, like, like a crouching roundhouse or crouching forward as an anti-air. Um, so but, yeah, um, as far as her command grab in AE, I, I have no idea. I really can't think why that move is so bad. Mm. Okay. So, okay, and, um, so, okay, so the, the Shotos, the Shotos, going mm. from, you know, Ryuken and Akuma players, going to Ryuken and Akuma in Third Strike, can you talk about what you'll, what, you know, what you can expect to see? Um, well, Ryu is a pretty radically different character. Like I said, he can use his fireballs as a mid to long range poke but not really as a zoning tool much at all. So um, pretty much everything that you know about like throwing fireballs and doing dragon punches doesn't really apply on third strike, unfortunately. So um, you have to be really rely on footsies and, and getting close to the opponent. Ryu does a lot of damage in third strike. He, he's, he's one of the more damaging characters in the game off of just really basic stuff like, like standing fierce, fierce Shoryuken will do a, a lot of damage, 20-25% sometimes. Um, so he has to get close and he has to run a 
pretty risky um, mix-up game to be successful, unfortunately, because he's he doesn't have good mid-range pokes for the most part, and uh, he he really needs to focus on on getting in the guy's face and not necessarily going crazy rush down, but he can do that. Give it, Denjin Hadoken gives him the ability to kind of go crazy at times um, and, and and he's a high risk high reward character for sure um, there are ways to play him lower risk but you have to be one of the best people in the world to pull it off I think um, very few people can can manage a low risk Ryu and win with it um, Ken is uh, really good he doesn't have a Kara throw not a, he, do, he doesn't have a as good of a Kara throw as he does an AE unfortunately so that kind of goes out the window um but he's got just as good of a cross-up in Third Strike, if not better, than he does in AE. He uh, has really simple combos. He can, you know, you're used to doing whatever short, short jab, low forward, EX hurricane kick, I'm guessing, is probably what people are doing now. I don't know. Uh, you would In Third Strike, you would just do, like, a short jab, short you can, short you can. Mm. That works. You know, jab, short you can, jab, short you can. You can carry that against most of the cast. Certain characters, it doesn't work, but... Uh, yeah, uh, that does a lot of damage. And then um, and he's got one of the best supers in the game in Super Art 3, which I guess they're giving him back in Street Fighter Cross Tekken, the Super Jin Rai Kyaku. Uh, wow, you can just gets, announce that, man. <laughs> I've been playing this game for too long, man. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah, he gets three meters, and, and he gets safe offensive pressure. So it's... Uh, He's really good. And then Akuma, um, his air fireball pressure game and, and zoning game is, is pretty similar, I think. I'm not, I'm not the best, uh, Akuma player, unfortunately. His entire vortex mindset doesn't, again, doesn't really work or apply because none of those backdash option selects work or, um, parry negates a lot of, like, cross up stuff as well. Um, but uh, using his air fireball as a good zoning tool still applies definitely. Um, he's he he has a lot. He has the best mobility in the game. I think he's got a great. Uh, he actually has in a game where anti airs are pretty risky. He has one of the best low risk anti airs if you have uh, meter. Because say you say the guy jumps in, you do a fierce shore. You can that's three hits. Say he starts to parry that. You can cancel that into your fireball super, which is another five hits. And say he starts to parry that. Well, Akuma recovers before his fire before they're done parrying his fireball, mm. so he can he can then mix up. He you know he can dump, jump over. He can do hurricane kick. He can do another Shoryuken. He can just sit there and mash jab all day if he wants to do that. Um, I know Seroid covered that in a, one of his uh, YouTube videos a little while where he teaches third strike. So uh, he's really good he, in a game like I said in a game where anti airs can be risky. He has one of the best. Um, uh, his teleport is is good in third strike. It, it's it's just as risky though as it is in AE. I think maybe a little less, but not mm. significantly. Um, but yeah, it's a uh, he's a good character. Uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about Urian. Okay, so this is of course if the storyline goes, he's. He's of the same species as Seth, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm, they, I guess. So. Yeah, they both. They don't. I don't think they really share any moves, but some moves have this uh, very similar animation to let you know that they're related. Mm -hmm. But you know, they. I, but if someone wants to say, say okay, I, I want to go ahead and play Yuri, and I'm a Seth player. What do you say about that? Um. Jeez. Uh. Well, Yuri, I guess like as the current. Uh, play style that's most popular is Seth, you know, the Punko style, going crazy rushdown um, doesn't really work for Yurian, I don't think. I think Yurian's a much more, uh, he has to play a much more safer game in Third Strike. He, he has decent mid-range pokes, so he can, but he has a kind of goofy, slow walk speed, um, so it's hard for him to play footsies, but he can do it. Um, He's another, but he's a character who can he can end the game in one opening because of his unblockables mm -hmm. with the Aegis Reflector. So um, he has to he has to play fairly safe. But if he gets one opening, he can he can end the round right then and there. And it's it's not. Um, I, I guess I said that wrong. I was going to say it's not difficult, but I guess his execution his execution level is relatively high. Mm. Um, you do have to you have to 
utilize charge partitioning, which is a third strike only system, which allows you to break up the charge of a charge move into two or more sections, letting you do something like, like you know, uh, let's say headbutt. You have to charge down for one for two seconds and then hit up in a punch. Well, you could charge down for one second, dash, charge down for the second second during that dash, and then hit up and punch. And so you, what will happen on the screen is you'll get dash headbutt. And, you know, it'll, wow. it'll just come out perfectly. And you could split it up into, into more than, than two. And I, I don't know if it has to be even. Every time I've ever used charge partitioning, it's been an even number. So two or four uh, sections will let you uh, uh, get that. But, um, yeah, you, uh, he, he has the, uh, the most satisfying combos in the game, I feel. Um, uh, no, no, no combo in the game is funner to pull off than tackle, tackle, head, but that's, that's really fun to hit someone with. Um, but, uh, but yeah, he's a, he's, he's a much different character than Seth, unfortunately. It's, it would not translate very well, I don't think. Um, it'd be, it'd be a learning curve, for sure. Mm, okay. And, um, let's see here. Um, okay. So... Talk about Hugo. Ziga is a Geef players, T Hawk players. They see Hugo's big ass. <laughs> so what what are they in for? Um, I mean, same basic game plan. Uh, Hugo has some uh, interesting tools that Geef and T Hawk don't really have. He is also missing some uh, some tools. Like he doesn't have a like a like a spinning lariat move at all, like Geef has. Mm -hmm. So I guess he's he's probably closer to T Hawk in that regard. But T Hawk has a Shoyuken, and Hugo doesn't, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, Hugo uh, has you know amazing damage. His 360 is really good. He can. Uh, it is possible to do a standing 720 in third strike. You know where you just stand there right in front of your opponent and rip the stick in a 720 motion and. You grab the guy with a super grab, which is pretty sure that's impossible to do in AE. Mm. Uh, just the, the engine requirements don't allow it. Um, he also has uh, his clap move, which uh, gives him uh, safe offensive pressure. Even if that move is parried, it is safe on parry. So, mm. Was that by design, you think? Uh, I would guess so, because it, it's, it's the only thing that, that... If he's close to his opponent, it's the only thing that he can do that's... Mm. That's not going to get him killed, uh, for the most part, because everything else that he has is, is pretty much throw based. I mean, he can do like if he has like super three, which is kind of his like rush punch super. He can do jab jab super, but that's not uh, um, that's it, not a good option. Um, but uh, yeah, he can do like crazy stuff with the, the with the claps because the claps can be sort of canceled. Um, into a sweep or into a standing uh, strong, and you can keep going from there. And it's he's got really good parry baits. Um, so yeah. Okay. Um, let's talk about poison. Oh no. Can nope. talk about <laughs> wow. Now, by the way, um, do you find it rather interesting that there seems to be some cross pollination between AE, Third Strike, and Street Fighter Cross Tekken? It's it's really interesting. It looks like that Capcom is trying to link these games together. Um, I really believe that was a firm reason why they added um, third strike characters to the game um, is because I think they were planning on you know they, that that was when I think it got the green light for third strike to be redone. And now and it's interesting now because it's uh, now it's. Um, you know, third strike characters are in A now. Third strike online edition comes out there, so now you got people like, okay, let me just go check out this game. And now you, now we find out mm -hmm. that you know there's a good amount of third strike characters uh, in um, in Street Fighter Cross Tech, and I always thought that was a little bit interesting to see. It looked like they're trying to, yeah, lead you on to one the game to another. Yeah, it's funny how, um, like, h however dead Third Strike has been as a competitive game since Street Fighter Four came out. There seems to be this like weird resurgence of um, casual fans of the game. I guess like if you ever go to Capcom Unity boards, 
and look at them at all in like their character popularity charts or whatever. Their Third Strike characters are always really high up there, so it was it's kind of interesting. I guess that's why they're they're deciding to stick those characters in all these games. Yeah, let me ask you a question. Uh, uh, for the people out there that are listening that, like me, may have played Third Strike in the past but never don't know nothing about the game, how is the game on a scrub level? Is the game fun? I mean, see, Street Fighter 4, 4 is fun in a scrub level, and it's fun on a high level, too, you know. Um, and mm-hmm. it's unfortunately, that, you know, I think just like with a lot of other fighters, a lot of people rush to judgment and think that Street Fighter 4 doesn't have a, a high game level. Of course it does. You know, but mm-hmm. so, but uh, for the people out there like me that would never, ever, ever get to a high level in any fighting game, you know, is third? You think Third Strike could be great? You know, as a scrub level or to a mid to an intermediate level uh, game, or is it a game that you um, gotta, or is it a game that you got to pull your heart and soul into to really, you know, really get any satisfaction out of it? I don't know if I can answer this, like. Tr- like not truthfully, uh, heartfelt because ugly third strike is really, really, really ugly. Unfortunately, it's it, um, at a scrub level. You you'll see people doing things that just the the game engine doesn't really allow for. Like I said, like like fireball traps, do, throwing throwing fireballs, trying to do a show you can, and and at a scrub level like that, something like that would work. But at even like a medium level. Any one of those fireballs could have been supered through. They could have been parried. They could have, you know, it's 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 a very hard thing for me to watch any kind of low level third strike match. Um, but I don't know if I don't know if that's that's because of the game or if that's just because I I play a lot of third strike. Um, you, like you, I I wonder what you know someone like Latif or someone who's really good at Punko, someone who's really good at AE thinks when they watch really bad Street Fighter 4 matches. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Maybe they think mm-hmm. the same thing. Mm-hmm. So, um... But yeah, it's 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 a really ugly game at low levels. I would guess that it, it's probably less fun than a game like CVS 2 at low level. CVS 2 at low level is a really fun game because you have... So many different options available to you. You can play with you know fifty whatever characters that are in the cast, all the different grooves and everything, and and really mess around with your friends. But um, a game like Third Strike, it all re- like it all revolves around the fact that Perry is really, really, really good. Um, you know, CBS Two gives you a bunch of different options. Third Strike gives you one really good option. And if you're playing Third Strike correctly, you understand how parry works and how to work around parry. Mm-hmm. And when you see people playing it that aren't using it or or understand it, that's when it gets really weird looking. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm not no damn scrub man. I don't know how to answer that <laughs> question. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I, I wonder, I'm just saying though, is uh, what, and maybe you know, Ski chime in on this, is it, it, Will if someone truly tries to play the game, is it going to be like Marvel Two, where there's so much to learn about the game, or the the, the, the demands of the game is so great that even if someone who does make a decent attempt to learn the game, it's the, the learning curve is so high that it, it it will lose interest before making enough progress to keep their interest. Is that making any sense? Uh, before phase starts, and I'll just mention that. Uh, I think it's kind of somewhere in between, like Face was saying, with something like a CES2, where you kind of you you can jump in. You have a lot of pleasing options that are there, and they're really easy to get into. And similarly with Street Fighter 4, and uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on the far end of the spectrum. If you're aware of what high-level play looks like in the game, then you're not really going to be doing it for for a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. Um, Third Strike, you, for people that are not particularly experienced, when you jump into the game, it kind of has a, it has an old school feel, right? Because it, it, it's, it's Street Fighter-ish, and you know, you've got, there's not a lot of, uh, I mean, there's, there's obviously there's like universal overhead and there's parry, but you don't really have to do it. So at first glance, it kind of feels a little bit more traditional just with really, really beefed up animation, but, the difference uh, between even mid-level play and high-level play starts to really, really... Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's pretty steep, I guess is the term. Um, and I, I think that 
one of the things that Ono was saying when Street Fighter 4 was originally in development or when it originally came out was that the game started to become developed for the hardcore audience to a point where he felt that First Strike was the ultimate with that, where it's there's you can you can kind of keep playing Third Strike. You can always be getting a little bit better because even if you um, even if you know even if you can hit all your combos every time you do all your combos, there's still a validity in learning the other characters, learning other guys' tendencies, and learning how to kind of gauge these two and what the other guy will specifically do in a specific instance, and then trying to parry it or counter it. Um, and, you know, having a parry there gives you a very, very direct counter with everybody. So there's, there's basically the, the learning curve kind of really, really um, tends to uh, amp up rather quickly. So if, you, if you're just playing alone with your friends, you probably wouldn't know, but if you are... If you look, if you look at videos, if you've seen the Daigo parry, and then you looked at like five other videos that are like related videos, you're probably not gonna be doing that stuff for a minute. Is that right, Face? Yeah, pretty much. I think like the learning curve is is a lot different to a game like CBS2 or Marvel2 even, because like CBS2 and Marvel2 have a lot of of execution stuff. Like a CBS2, CBS2 a high level, you need to kind of understand how a groove works. You know, if if you're using it or defending against it, Marvel 2 obviously has a huge execution barrier in it. Um, all of the most of the mid to high level execution stuff that's in the game is relatively simple. Like I said, like the basic Yun Ganyajin combo, I could teach anyone how to do that in a day. Most people, if you're if you're if you're a fighting game player, I could teach you how to do it in in an hour. It's 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 really not a difficult combo to do, and that's gonna that's a combo that'll do 55 percent damage on most of the cast. So it's not execution that, that makes third strike difficult necessarily. It's the fact that um, the most rewarding option in the game is the l easiest option to perform as well. So it it really comes down to um, reading the other player's uh, mind, I guess. Is the, I mean, and, and all of all fighting games are like this. You know, is the guy going to throw a fireball right now? Should I jump right this minute, or or is he going to whiff? standing light punch and I'm going to get dragon for it but in third strike is it, 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 did that guy just tap down Do, should I go high or should, should I go low again now it's, it's, um, and it's really rapid fire like that so, so when someone, someone is used to that thinking on that speed of mix up of, of really hot, rapid fire high low throw mix up um, it it really comes into play really quickly uh, if you if you're a lower level player. How like it seems like one guy's thinking circles around you. You know you're you're pressing buttons and they're never working. And it's not necessarily that they're they're parrying everything, but they're always out of range or they're always stuffing it correctly with the right normal because they're they're used to thinking on that 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 level of they're not they're not worried about a fireball. They're worried about is this guy gonna hit crouching jab? And it's just a matter of. And I'm not saying that like. Like oh, like third strike, you have to think faster and have to be smarter. No, it's not that at all. It's both games require just equal amounts of of thought. I don't I don't consider one player to be better at fighting games than the other. It's just um, it's a different uh, kind of of thinking. I, I think I think it's a lot a lot more similar to like a a two D Tekken game or a Virtua Fighter than it is to to any Street Fighter game. The the thought process you have to go through. While playing the game, and is, is that pretty much why? I mean, and both this goes to both of you again. Is that pretty much why? You know why the, that the people that tend to really like third strike are usually playing uh, are usually really good at non Street Fighter games. Or uh, they play, you know, whether that be Tekken players or King of Fighters players, you know, because uh, that's the thing I've been hearing. That you know, a lot of the people that really, really like Third Strike are usually those who play non Street Fighter games, and in fact, it's the only Street Fighter game that they play. Uh, and uh, you know, and that was really interesting. Um, what do you say about that? Do you want to go first, Key? Yeah, I guess uh, just off the top of my head, you find a little bit of validity to that. Um, I don't know. 
Well, I guess what I would say is kind of the more of a Street Fighter purist you are or you claim to be, then the less likely that you are to play Third Strike seriously, but it's, it's not necessarily a foregone conclusion. There are plenty of people, like, you know, off the top of my head, like Ricky Ortiz, that mm. enjoy Third Strike, and they are quite skilled in, you know, the Street Fighter arts and, you know, with fundamentals and everything. But it's really hard to... Really hard question for me to answer, so why don't you jump in? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, um, like I said earlier, like the skill sets absolutely do transfer. It's just Street Fighter heavily uh, relies on certain ones and not others. So, um, I guess like the best game to translate, if you were, if you were, I play this game, I want to learn how to play Third Strike. The best one to go from would probably be CBS Two because it. It has a lot of characters that are that are footsie based, you know, single normal into lots of damage combos like Zagat or Kami, um, and and dealing and working how to wor- learning how to deal with those characters in those games is in some ways similar in dealing with a character like Third Strike Chun, um, but at the same time. Parry influences everything. So and and P, and P Groove in CVS two is not the same thing as Parry in Third Strike. They're similar, but they're not the same thing, unfortunately. Um, yeah, and as far as like uh, who who plays what game, um, I would. You're right. Most people who would consider themselves Third Strike purists, you know, the the, the very top of the top players of Third Strike, for the most part, don't play other Street Fighter games. They play they play other types of fighting games. Um, like, but but even like very recent examples, like all of a sudden you've seen MOV show up in all of these Japanese uh, tournaments, and he's doing very well. He's not winning them yet, but I know he just recently beat Mago at God's Garden. And MOV is probably like the best, if not the second best, third strike player on the planet right now. Um, the only one who could you could you could contest with him is Kuroda, but MOV uses Chun, Kuroda uses the rest of the cast, so it's kind of hard to compare them. Um, so, uh, but, but so he, it's obviously possible to translate the skills between the two because if you watch MOV play Street Fighter Four, he plays it very similarly. He 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 walks back and forth. He abuses the fact that he has a Kara throw. He um, he plays really safe pressure based gameplay. And, um, so it's, it's, the skill sets, like I said, translate. It's just a matter of taking the time to, to figure out the intricacies of the systems and, and letting you do it. Um, by the way, yeah, uh, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons mm-hmm. that the game, um, in a lot of people's opinions is actually good because it's not just the same thing with, uh, it's not the same thing as another Street Fighter, but it still holds up competitively. You know, you've got mm-hmm. uh, the game is still played even even today in Japan, like at a quite high competitive level. So, you know, it's it's different, but you know, it's, it still works. It's not a not not everyone's preference. Yeah, absolutely. I, I hate to do this, but um, the the third uh, change list has just been. Um, a put up Uh-oh. for AE. Um, so um, I, I don't like I don't like doing this because I really do wanted to, to talk about Third Strike. But <laughs> out the out the blue though, I just wanted to say a, a couple of things that stick out. They have buffed Cody's um, walk speed, which was a big big uh, thing. Oh wow! Way out. Um, they have buffed uh, Evil Reuse Life. Um, so now he's nine hundred nine hundred. Uh, so um, so I was just looking over some of their. So um, they have also did some buffs to Guy, but I'm still having a hard time on this. I'm um, using the Google translation. Um, mm. They also post the nerfs to Yoon. Um, yes, they have changed the EX punch. punch. Yes, they did change uh, the um, the arc of his um, of his uh, dragon punch uh, going so far on the air. Um, they also um, posted some stuff to Yang. They both got um, damage nerfs, not extreme, and it was talking about ten points. Uh, so we'll see. Um, and um, Makoto also got some nerves, unfortunately, folks. I am so sorry out there for the people out there that was hoping that Makoto <laughs> wouldn't be touched, and she was perfect. So, um, so yeah, she got a couple of damage nerves. 
but um, yeah, so um, but anyway, uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, when there's more translations, uh, I'll get I'll bust in with something if it's something substantial. But let's go ahead and continue with the first try talk. Um, my my next question really is you know revolving around. Um, about Third Strike Online Edition in particular, and that really is, um, does this have a chance to be sustained? Uh, at well, what level I mean, well, do I'm you mean sustained? Really, what I'm saying is, is, is it something that, can we see this as being um, a revival of sorts? I'm not saying that it's going to be, you know, thousands of people oh. playing First Strike. And well, um, well, so far, I'm, I'm actually pretty surprised that the number of people who I would not have thought would be would even give the game uh, a shot are playing it. Do I think they're going to stay? Probably not. Um, I think it's I think what it is, it's a really nice gift to the people who are who have been playing Third Strike since Street Fighter 4 came out. They you know, they still had their PS2s, they still were using whatever emulator on their laptops to play the game. And it's a really sweet gift to them to give them the ability to play the game on a modern TV, on a modern console, with their TE stick at the same tournament that all the, the Street Fighter 4 players are at. Um, because the game was on real serious life support, even here in uh, North Carolina, where we actually had a, a really good scene even after Street Fighter 4 came out, well into it. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, uh, until very recently, it was it was dying off pretty bad. We were struggling to get eight people at a at a at a statewide tournament. You know, it's it was it was a hard hard thing to keep going. But uh, but yeah, it looks like it's turning back up. I think it, it, in places like this, you know, in SoCal or well, SoCal, they have an arcade scene. But um, I guess like places like New York City, where I guess like Chinatown Fair is now closed. Um, and yeah, I know they have a good third check scene up there. They will keep playing it on this version. Um, it, it'll basically sustain those players longer throughout this generation. Do I think it'll come back as a serious tournament game? Maybe. It, it's really going to depend on the way the first couple majors look, I think. Um, Seasons Beatings is the first one that I can think of. I know Devastation is kind of, sort of, thinking about Third Check Online, but they didn't announce it originally when they first made their first post. So it's kind of up in the air to see what they're going to do with it, if anything. But Seasons Beatings, I think, will be the first one because they they have a history of supporting the Third Strike community. They uh they had it on arcade cabinets actually last year. They flew in Momochi, so and he played it with everyone. So um it'll be it'll be cool to see how it does there first because um that's I think that's the first big major tournament to have it. Um and and if it does well there, then it then it will go through to NEC. And then final round, I know is going to have it. So um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Do I think it'll be at Evo? No, I don't think it will. I think you, it's it's done at Evo. So if if you're a Street Fighter Four player looking to get into Third Strike to get onto the Evo main stage, I'm sorry, it's probably not going to happen, um, unless Mr. Wizard has a change of heart. But I don't see that happening, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, I think I think it's just gonna I think it's I think it's just gonna basically keep the people who have been playing it around and and you'll maybe get one or two uh, new guys in for for new blood. But I do think the online is gonna sustain it for a, for a long time. It's it's I'm, I'm already being I'm already able to play players who are on the other half of my state that you know they live four hours away that I can't really play them often. But now I get to play them you know every single day and it's uh it's gonna help the mid to high level third strike players in the country get a lot better I think it's going to be a big deal the only way I think it would get back into Evo is you know if there start to be like 500 man tournaments or something oh yeah or, or maybe maybe even more than that you know the for people who weren't around it's really weird that we're having a, an alphaism radio where we're talking to people or addressing it to people that like don't really play because like that didn't even that crowd didn't even exist when we started the show. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, it's it's essentially um, it when it was first put in it wasn't in Evo at, at first, although it was you know Street Fighter Three. The game was pretty much campaigned to get into Evo. There was 
you couldn't you couldn't browse a thread on Draken.com without seeing a I want my third strike at Evo avatar. You know, it was mm-hmm. it was really kind of like uh, it, it just experienced this incredible resurgence in popularity, and nobody's sure exactly why. It was kind of just like a perfect storm of like really good uh, high level Japanese play coming out, and it was a game that like new blood could get into and not necessarily just like kind of get owned by people that were already established in like CBS 2 and, and Marvel 2 so there was a lot going on there and it'll, it'd be incredibly tough to recreate those conditions now um I have to break in okay <laughs> couple <laughs> things Oni's life has been bu- buffed to a thousand now um and interesting DJ he can now link his super into his Ultra 1 uh, and so he's the only other character besides Dan in the game that can actually do that. Uh, so uh, more as I get it, but continue on, folks. This is good. So I, 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 I don't know. If, I, I agree with you. I don't know if the Evo, if they ever, Evo will ever be back with Third Strike. I don't. I'm not in favor of that, and it has nothing to do with Third Strike in particular. It has everything to do with just supporting what we have and moving forward. Um, and you know, it's the the past is the past. And I agree that we should enjoy the past, and this is a testament to that. But we shouldn't live in the past, you know. And I believe in supporting the games that are out now because, really, it's you know, I, I, I we talked about this with Wizard um, last, you know, in the last Alphism. I mean, I thought you know this year was tough on finding out how many games they're going to have, but next year I don't know how they're going to choose because there's going to be a game. There's going to be at least one game that's going to get that's going to have a lot of support. It's gonna get left out. I mean, I'm talking about a lot of mainstream support. I'm not talking about Guilty Gear or Blaze Blue. I'm talking about that's gonna because at that as at the the pace that they're growing at, they can't have eight or nine games. It's just not gonna happen. And you know, yeah, and it's still yeah. gonna and it's still gonna be three days next year. I mean, as they might say, they might it might probably be four days starting in 2013. But and right now, it's still three days. So yeah, yeah. There's so many games coming out this year and. Um, for the the reason that the game, the number of games had to be cut to five this year is because they were expecting so many people for Marvel Three and so many people for Street Fighter Four. So it was it was just a matter of logistics that you know games kind of had to get like a whole day devoted to them. So you got those two games already out in front, and there's no real reason to expect them to taper off too much next year. Um, there's there's Street Fighter Cross Tekken obviously coming out, which is possible to kind of dip into both of those um, numbers a little bit. So maybe that'll make things more manageable. Then um, I don't think we're gonna have Tekken Tag Two out, so that that actually might be one thing. I, I think that it's likely that we won't see Tekken next year at Evo, but you know whether or not Mortal Kombat will return. Whether like Skull Girls could possibly get into there, mm, and then there you go. That's the game that um, I, I have to. I'm trying to work on it, people. I would love to get Mike Z on the on the show to talk about. I could probably do that. Yeah, he's a uh, cool. good guy. Yeah. And then there's KLF 13 coming out as well. There's a lot. There's a lot of possibility for next year, and it's pretty hard to say. Oh no, mm. Virtual Fighter won't make it either. That's not going to come out. Oh no, no. But even still, I mean, just between um, what you might expect for, between Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Street Fighter AE 2012, and Street Fighter Cross Tekken, that could easily be three 1,000-man tournaments. You know, yeah. and that's, that's exactly. a lot right there. Exactly. That's crazy. Are you going to play next year, please? Third Strike. <laughs> yeah, of Third Strike Casuals. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. I was I didn't play anything last year, and if had I gone this year, I wouldn't have played anything this year. So, who knows? I was actually uh, surprisingly excited about Virtual Fighter Five when they announced. It. I don't know why. I've never played a Virtual Fighter game in my life, and I don't know why I was excited about the announcement. But I actually got kind of uh, hyped up to play a Virtual Fighter game for whatever reason. I'm disappointed that the game's coming out in the summer because I was. That was one of the games that I was expecting to be playing on my Xbox um, while I was waiting for Street Fighter 4, but turned out mm-hmm. that the game yeah. was suffering from, like, 
Tekken and Guilty Gear Syndrome where it's always a version behind the current oh, yeah. the lost interest. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, I- interesting. Okay. So, uh, breaking in, the U nerfs are in. And for this one, there is no surprises here. Dragon, um, the, his Dragon Punch light version no longer invincible. Light, medium, and hard EX versions have higher recovery. Medium um, it does 110 instead of 120 damage. Shoulder, 100 instead of 140. Wow, that's a big one. Uh, down from 140. EX, 130 instead of 150. Guinea Gen has now, I guess they're saying 60 frames less active. Um, and nerf damage. Wow. So it's a second shorter. Yeah. Hmm. That's really surprising. I, I don't know why they gave that damage. character. Oh, he's got a bunch of damage nerfs, too. All yeah, I expect the damage. combo's been nerfed. Um, EX Lunge is minus one now. Ha! Yeah. I called that. <laughs> and all you scrubs out there that were like, oh, it's going to be minus one. Yeah. That's how it's supposed to I be. Mean, well, I mean, it's actually probably better than I expected. I mean, it's it's not it's still not bad on block. <laughs> you know, yeah, minus one on block is still pretty good. I mean, yeah, yeah you're not gonna you can't even you can't even you can give can't even reversal super it. So oh, yeah, super, can. Super. he'll he'll be able to reversal super reversal ultra. You know, uh, the one one frame um, uh, supers and and ultras like that will be able to grab. Oh, it's one frame. That, I'm sorry, that's range. right. Yeah, okay. But what you got to think about there is it being minus one, and I'm pretty certain that Yun has some three-frame normals. Not every character even has a three-frame normal. Yeah. So at that point, he's you know still at kind of a technical advantage because they're not going to be able to really punish him unless they risk something on a grab. And then if you just go sticking grabs out there, then you you know open yourself up to like die kick pressure or that, or and so on. So it's still going to be. A little bit mix up y but mm-hmm. it's not gonna be like the way that I describe it is, is like you you see a young player, right? And you are in their head, like you know exactly what they're thinking, right? They get they get frustrated trying to get in legit, trying to trying to use the dive kick with <laughs> red needle, and then they do the little three stew just like nah, 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 and then they just like backdash and they do EX lunge. And you're like, Oh oh yeah, yeah, well I, I gotta block that one because I couldn't tell if you were going to do it fast enough for me to actually react to it. I can't even bait it with focus. So, yeah, like, still going to be pretty useful, but it's just not going to be like, you can just do this instead of doing what you're supposed to do to get in there. Um, a, um... Bro, Hakan gets oil from the start of a match? What? What? The oil, the oil that he puts on him will actually be on him. Wow. That is hilarious. Okay. Oh, wow. uh, oh, oh yeah. I'm looking at Hakan. They, I mean, I'm reading the Google translation, but even with this bad translation, they're saying uh, we're going to dispel that he's a weak character. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and so, um, yeah. Um, interesting. Um, a hey, uh, Neff, can you give me Hakan's changes? Also, I want to know the rest of Oni's and Evil Ryu. Although, interesting that both Oni and Evil Ryu got a bump on their life. Um, Evil Ryu is now 900, 900. Um, and, uh, and Oni is now 1000. Uh, so that, that's interesting here. Uh, let's see here. Um, Yoon, I still, I, uh, we, we just talked about him. Actually, I still don't think he's, um, I don't think he's useless. I think uh, as much as people people are really overplaying it as usual. I mean, he's still going to be good. He's just not going to be broken, and or he's not going to be super S tier, whatever you want to call it. Um, so um, yeah, um, I guess my my last thing on on, on third strike, I, I really wanted to ask, really is, um, you you said um, earlier that the game is not as certainly as execution heavy as some like CVS2 is you know it, you know is it is it true to say that third strike is the closest to playing a, a fighting version of chess where you know uh, you know where it's not about I mean you mean in chess it's not about how fast you move the damn piece 
or you know. Mm, wow. yeah, 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 you know, uh, it, it's all. Of, I mean, if if that's where you're going with the analogy, then then yeah, I guess I don't. I don't. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm not. I haven't played many fighting games outside of Street Fighter games. To be honest with you, so um, I don't know if there are other games that are as high that are played at as high of a level that also have such a low, a relatively low execution barrier. I mean, there certainly is some really high execution stuff, especially once you get into like the charge bar, tu- uh, charge buffering, and uh, charge partitioning, is what I meant to say, and. Um, like uh, like the like yeah, like the weirdo option selects SGGK doing a uh, super jump cancel special moves, you know, making like Q's command grab throw invincible or Dudley's uh, ducking throw invincible. Um, there certainly is incredibly high execution stuff like that in the game, but to play the game at a mid to high level, especially here in America, um, the execution barrier is incredibly low. So, uh, um, so yeah. Man, I would I would just like to take uh, a little bit of an issue with the whole fighting games as chess analogies because I you know I've heard it both ways and sure like you can compare fighting games to chess you can say well you know all of my moves all of my like normal moves are kind of like. Uh, moving a piece, you know, maybe like my fierce punch is my rook, something like that, mm-hmm. but you are really, really reaching when you make that analogy, and it's something that yeah. uh, people kind of, uh, uh, they kind of draw upon a lot, and I mean, it it sort of makes sense, but if you were to like think about it like mathematically, like you try to quantify this, like what would the matrix look like that you're supposed to multiply third strike by to look like chess? You would expect it to be like a fairly similar size matrix for it to actually be like similar to chess, but in reality, you would be shrinking the size of the matrix from chess all the way down to third strike because you're not moving a number of pieces you can move in real time, and then with third strike particularly, you could you can't just like, oh, well, this guy's going to take my my pawn, so I just like, pushed forward, and then now I took his pawn. Like, you can't <laughs> do that kind of thing. Like, just, man, like, StarCraft is a game that you could sort of compare to chess, because you have a board and pieces that you move, and direct counters that are literally inherently built into the game. Whereas, like, fighting games, it's not like that. They try to just build a character and leave the rest of it up to you for the most part. Nowadays, they're kind of, they're forced to take a little bit more of a a nuanced perspective because there are so many eyes on the game and so many people playing that people just aren't going to be happy unless they can fight competitively with their characters. But in the days of Third Strike, people were more concerned about the, the game overall and the experience that it delivered rather than like the characters and everything so I just I just uh, I, I'm not scared of that are you kidding me Dudley you must is, be reading some more changes Dudley is plus yes. one on focus now oh that's mm, good what, that's did really they, what did they improve did they, does that mean they improved his dash I have no idea but that's what they're saying he's plus one on his focus now that's not so bad. Uh, you know, I think that that means that he probably got a dash that's about the speed of, um, of like, Abel, which, you know, that's not too bad. I don't know what he was before, but hmm. Dudley, the problem with Dudley in Street Fighter 4 is that he doesn't have any way to get in that's reliable enough for him to actually, you know, win consistently, so... If that's what they're going to do if that's the decision that they're going to try to roll with, preserve the character's style and his you know it's not supposed to be like particularly easy for him to get in you can't just blindly focus with him but he has a good focus attack so what, you know, what, what, what in third strike he was considered one he's considered really high tier in third strike what what was lost in translation from third strike to a uh, to, to street fighter 4 oh uh, yeah, well it's mostly just like it's mostly just like engine differences like um you can't like, once Dudley gets in on you in Third Strike, the, it's really hard to get him back off of you. Whereas in Street Fighter 4, you know, you have safe sure you can for the most part. I mean, you have two meters and you can, you could sure you and get him off, get him off of your, off of you. Um, 
it's a much he's a much more scary character once he's on top of you. The, the once he's once he's next to you, the the game plan is pretty much the same. It's it's a it's a high low mix up into a really damaging combo. Um, it's just the I'm pretty sure his overhead is faster in third strike than it is um, in AE, so it's harder to react to. And then once he hits you with it, it can go straight into super. He doesn't have to link crouching jab into another standing roundhouse EX hurricane, all that stuff. He can just go straight into super. He doesn't have to worry about scaling or anything. Um, guy. 0 to 1 is anti air now. Nice. Very, very, very nice. That's what he needed. He needed a buff on him. Oh, gosh. Okay, nice. Um, wow. Interesting changes so far. Um, hey, I, um, Ski, I know you got a bounce, man. Um, thank you for coming on and, and dropping that knowledge on Third Strike. Um,. You know, a you know, a you're still the face of Alphas and Radio. You know, I just wanted to, you know, you know, so much is happening. How can I not have Alphas and Radio in the forefront? You know, so thanks for coming on, man. You know, you know, you holding it down there. By the way, man, in Ohio, you people got some dumbasses. Like, how you gonna have an earthquake that's barely felt and you call that when we're talking about? Hey, what's going on? With, I just heard the ground shake. What's going on? I'm like, are you kidding me, man? Are you kidding me? See? Man, you know, dude. Um, we're gonna need first off before I go. Face, you need to do the unpluggy pluggy thing on your mic. Oh, oh thanks. Uh, yeah. I'm like a robot again. And if you ever come on uh, one of the other podcasts that I'm on, Wake Up Show, you can bring up to tell you to mute your microphone while you're not talking because that typing, I think that it's you. Is fuck. Oh, yeah, it probably is. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's just mute while you're typing, and it's cool. Um, but, yo, we don't have earthquakes in, in on the East Coast up here, man, like, or in the East Coast at all. I, all right, honestly, I didn't even really feel it because, like, I was in the car, like, in the parking lot, actually. And I just kind of turned the car off, so I wasn't really thinking about it. And, you know, like, you know how you're kind of in the, like, the motors, rumbly, and I was just kind of sitting there, like, I was, like, listening to NPR on, like, a little driveway moment. So it kind of, it shook my feet a little bit. But my neighbors, there was, like, a, an apartment or an apartment complex full of women, like, above me. There was a woman and her daughter, and then there's like, a couple of elderly ladies below me, and then, like, a middle-aged woman across the hall from me, and they were all, like, Freaking out, and they're just like, "Did you find anything? You know anything? What was that? What was that? Oh, I was going crazy." Oh. I'm like, "All right, guys, let's calm down. Cal everybody, calm down." So they were pretty shaken, to use a pretty bad pun. But I, I, oh, sorry, man, we're not used to earthquakes, so it kind of freaked us out. Don't put us on blast, West Coast. I know you guys. I mean, guys, Joan, I mean, you can understand. See, when I was riding home, I was into the, the 911 call. Yeah, man, I mean, yeah, the ground was shaking a bit. I was just calling to see what's going on. Man, this ain't freaking Larry King. <laughs> I mean, they, I mean, <laughs> and they, 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 hey, 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 Ski was funny. The guy that was answering 911 calls, he sounds a little bit like you, man. And he had it, man. He like, we may have a minor tremor. All right, man. Don't get all <laughs> bent out of shape. We know, <laughs> you know. And, and then the second call, it was back to back to back. Second call, he was like, nine one one. Do you have an emergency?" <laughs> uh. <laughs> was like, this dude has seriously reached his, his breaking point with these people, man. Nah, but it was funny, nonetheless. All right, well, I'm good. Good, good to know that you guys are doing fine and no one died or anything, except for the people that will try to get through nine one one with actual damn emergency. Couldn't get through because some fool was talking about how uh, the the apple fell from the tree. All right, yeah, so. Man. Coop's chair fell over. His lawn chair, man. His lawn chair didn't fell fell over. His, a, yeah. a lawn chair, dude. It fell over. It's serious. He had to go put it back upright. I don't know what else to tell you. The world will never know. Well, like I said, like you said, I do have to get going. I was really happy to be here tonight. Thank you for having me on. Thanks, Face. For joining us, uh, you know, I'm, you guys are still going to talk a little bit. Yeah. You guys know me, I'm Ski Sonic. 
You can check me out, uh, aside from when I'm on Alpha Fitness and Radio, uh, I do the Wake Up Show You Can podcast, so it's on the front page of showyoucan.com. Uh, and this week we also had a Flash Metroid, and we, of course, gave shout-outs to Alpha Fitness and Radio, who had him on for us. Um, I do commentary at tournaments. I did some commentary at Evo, and it should be at Summer Jam this weekend, so if you like that, check it out. And if you do like my commentary and my podcast and stuff, you should like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. Don't just, like, friend me on Facebook because, like, it's cool if you're my friend and all, but I'm not going to take that as a sign that you actually like me. So you can yeah, like what? me, too, on uh, the other page where it's, like, the like button, not just the friend button. And then I know. You know, I, you know, I really like to be liked, so it's, it makes me feel good. You can follow me on Twitter. It's just uh, twitter.com slash ethonic. Oh, and if you work for Reddit, man, <laughs> give me my fucking name back, yo. Some douchebag just, like, stole my shit. That was not cool. <laughs> Clearly jacked my shit during Evo when I got put so elegantly on blast by uh, the hordes of uh, fighting game whatevers. Give me my shit back, yo. I'm trying to post on Reddit. I'm not trying to be like, call me Ski Sonic or whatever. Shout out to Tasteless and Artosis. Shouts out. All right, I'm going to see you all guys later. Take it easy, my friend. Peace. PTO, support. Please. Peace. Hey, man, someone took my name on PSN. I mean, how many people named Bunkai? I don't <laughs> think that's a very popular name, but somebody took it. I thought I played that guy. <laughs> Seriously, man, there's some person. There's a, um, and it's true on, um, Xbox Live, too. Someone took Bunkai on that one. It's messed up, man. I was lucky. I, I didn't have uh, the Face NC uh, PSN account until just like a couple days before Third Check Online. And I made it, and I was lucky enough nobody had it, nobody had taken it yet, so. And by the way, um, by the way, uh, if you do have Bunk Eye, I will pay you 20 bucks if you give me that <laughs> name back. Alright? 20 bucks. I am not giving you any of my HP touch pads. You can forget it. But I will pay you 20 bucks. 20 bucks. It's a good deal. 20 bucks. All right. Now, all right. So, going back over these changes, um, let's see here. Oh, they nerfed um, Yang's jumping middle kick. So, so he can't cross up, cross you up as much. Ah. Uh, I don't know yet. I mean, I hopefully, I'm hoping for three. I might get one. What do you mean three? What are you saying? I mean, I ordered three of them. Oh, I ordered, those touch pads, I ordered yeah, five yeah. of them. I ordered five of them, but HP and Barnes and Noble both flaked out on me. And mm. then the other three, I haven't heard anything, and it's been three days, so I'm hoping that means that it's on its way. But I did record shipping, so I won't get it until like the week after next. Uh, if I do get three, um, one is a present for a, a dear. Um, for a dear co-worker that I'm not going to ha- um, be able to have the fortune of working with anymore. Oh. Uh, because I'm being demoted and moved on. You know, yeah, it happens. You know, um, and, uh, and then, and then, and then the third one, um, I haven't decided what I'm going to do with that one yet. Um, but the first one, I'm going to keep it for myself, obviously, because I intend on seeing how it works. And then once they got, uh, the Android, uh, Android up and running, I wouldn't you you know put that on there and then I'll probably put Windows 8 on there. All right. Um, so anyway, so um, a someone a I need someone to give me some some. Okay, so um, I I saw Oni's. I don't understand the first one though. It says Oni. Make sure you can first hit is vulnerable to attack. What do you mean first hit is vulnerable to attack? I don't understand. Um, I don't understand uh, that. So someone, if they can, uh, someone can explain that to me. Um, um, and then someone, if they can give me evil reuse changes and guys changes, thank you very much. Um, 
Okay. Cody, knife attacks are doing are going to change. Zoning tools will be balanced. What does that mean? Walk speed is now faster. Hammer hook is has less negative frames on standing block. On country block, it is now negative one. Can do overhead with knife. Oh, cool. Crouching short can now be combo into light ruffian kick. Bad spray is now two hits. Bad spray is now super cancelable and FA cancelable. Bad spray into final destruction is now possible. <laughs> what the <laughs> hell, man? Cody, welcome back. <laughs> Medium ruffian kick has a larger hitbox. Um, e, uh, EX Zonk Knuckle knocks further away. EX Zonk Knuckle can now FADC easier. When you have the knife, you can block. Oh my god. Oh wow, weird. It doesn't, does it, it doesn't make him lose the knife? No. Oh, that's really good. I was wondering about that because I, I was watching like some Cody players and they don't ever pick up the knife ever. So, here's it. Standing life punch with knife is plus six. Wow. <laughs> wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. If it's, oh my god, okay. Interesting. Uh, wow, wow. Uh, where is Saber? I mean, I mean, he he, he must be tweeting. Oh no, I love you. I love you. I know. Love you tomorrow. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, thank you. Um, Cody. Um, if I can get guys changes, um, I'm yes. I a rival. I agree. Only changes weren't that. I expected a little bit. You know, a little bit more. Um, however. I think with Ryu and I think with Ryu and maybe a couple of other characters, I don't think they're tell telling us the whole story. Like Ryu got basically nothing really. Uh, Ultra Two got buffed. That Ultra that no one uses. Um, I mean, it's just I mean I don't know. Um, so I don't know what what where they're gonna go with that, but I I hope I mean. There's nothing there that really stands out. And the same thing with Oni. Nice that they did buff his life, his life to a thousand. Uh, okay, light slash. Now he's crouching. Okay, that is um, that is worth knowing. Okay. Okay, what what is that? Okay, some people you got people you got to get me some. Um, you you got you got to feed me some information. Okay, I heard that Dudley got like a huge. Well, I saw plus one on focus. Come on, man. He got a cross up too. He can cross up with a uh, jump jab. Excellent. Uh, HP, I got HP from, um, the CDW site, and I also got two from Sears. Okay, here we got some data coming in. They, they, they nerfed the range on EX command grab for Makoto. Oh my god, what the hell, like, they made the command grab even worse? Really? I didn't know that the AEX one was really that that dang good. It's not. Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't understand why they would nerf you even more. Uh, the super got a buff. It's three seconds longer now. For oh, for okay. Makoto, for Makoto. Um. Do you have anything on anything on Evil Ryu or Guy? No, I haven't seen anything. I think I saw Guy's actually. Let me see if I can find him here. That's Dudley. That's Yang. Oh, here, here you go. Here's guys. 
You Bronco, are you watching Garfus? No. Watch it. Chris was up 2-1, and then Sanford came back to reset this set. Now they're in the last set right now. Last time I watched, Chris oh. lost. Um, you found guys you said? Yeah, yeah, I just linked it uh, in the IRC. My hands are covered um, with hot sauce. <laughs> so I can click he, uh, All right, right here it says the hitbox on neutral jump hard punch has been increased in size. Uh, jump medium punch and jump heavy kick have also increased expansions in the hitboxes. Uh, it mostly means they extended the bottom of the hitboxes. Guy's ground throw range has been increased. It's now the same as Ryu's. The elbow drop can now be activated with down back as well as straight down. Hmm, okay. So pretty much the same, just some buffs in hitboxes it looks like. Whatever. What's the time? Cause I mean, know that he starts oil. Wait, what'd you say? I didn't even hear that. What's the cons changes? I know he starts oil now. Oh, I don't know. I haven't seen those. I just heard what Ski said. Okay, you people gotta give me something to work with. You can jump cancel deadly ducking? Really? No, in in third strike, yeah. Oh. Yeah, you could super jump cancel pretty much any special in the game and makes it throw invincible for the first couple frames. It's like really hard to do. Like expert. Yeah, yeah. Like, 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 less than ten people in the world probably. It's one of those things like it just they just kind of found it in the engine in the last couple of years and really started exploring it. Like the new Q could do it for for a couple of years now, but like the the fact that they've translated it to other specials in the game is is relatively new. I think. At least I haven't seen it. I I, I first noticed people doing it maybe six months ago. Okay, so I got on these changes. Okay, so the life build up I already knew. EX Hurricane will not hit in every situation that's been fixed. Like hit Demon Slash now has an additional hitbox on the lower side, so it's easy to hit thinner crouching opponents. Okay. Raging Demon increased from 350 to 370. Ground regardless if it's ground or air. With Ultra 1, when you aim it upwards, it's 9 frames from startup? What? Okay. Full invincibility from start to the second at the frame. Wow. So that means anti-air. Oh my god. Chris had that round and the fucking he did the air, the neutral air dash thingy. Mm -hmm. And then freaking Sanford did brownhouse into ultra. Oh. Sanford had like, like 2% left. It's fucking gay. Wow. See if I watched it. I will witness another heartbreak, so I'm glad I didn't watch it. Sanford's like one of the few Street Fighter 4 players I really like, really like to watch. He's really fun. Yeah, he has a gift. That's definitely it. Oh, yeah. Um, something came out on Gar Gar in Garcross. Sanford was on the mic with Arturo, and then I heard. I heard. 
Oh, what is oh this? my god. Um, it's, 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 same for, same for, um, Yikes is sponsored, and then Arthur was like, yo, that shit wasn't supposed to come out in summer, until summer jam. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Triforce removed uh, Yipes and Dominion the other day from their Facebook page. That's what yeah. everyone started thinking that shit. And then uh, Dominion, whatever, said that he wasn't sponsored, so everyone just assumed Yipes wasn't either. But yes, yet Dominion made a um, he put a tweet out saying he he's he left Empire, and mm -hmm. then Yipes hasn't said anything yet. But it seems pretty obvious he's out of Empire. Yeah. Good for them. I'm sorry, now. I would click on stuff, but right now I'm eating hot wings. My hand is covered in hot sauce. What kind of hot wings did you get? From Domino's. And we're ready to get it. Domino's. Domino's, good shit. They're okay. Good shit's annoying. I'm just watching, like, these uppercuts go by, and I'm just like, what the fuck, man? That, that, No, Empire was not gonna pay for Kevin's trip. That's why he wasn't, he was about not to go, but I think he's gonna go now. Since he left, I'm not sure how. So. So Yikes and Dominion no more part of Empire? Hello? Oh, you, you, oh, you know because um, Triforce wasn't going to pay for his stuff. It was more like... I heard it was more money problems for Dominion. That's why he wasn't about to go, but... I heard he might be going now. But I'm not sure about this money situation, though. I hope he goes, though. Yeah, I hate this trend of like handing your SPO spot to other people. I don't think it's. I don't think it's cool. Yeah, I mean, why compete? Why compete in a tournament where you go to a another country that you can't afford to go to? I mean, someone's like, well, okay, well. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, didn't like, uh, didn't, um, Twitch TV put in a bunch of money for, uh, for yeah, the, the but tickets and stuff? Yeah, well, a thousand, but that's 500 each for L.I. Joe and Dimini. Okay, okay, and yeah, so that means they still yeah. didn't pawn me up, like, another grand just to get the ticket, yeah. really, because tickets right now to Japan are so expensive. Yeah. Especially, apparently, the... The yen is like crazy expensive now. Yeah, man, it's like it's like ridiculous. I get an email like once a week telling me how much tickets to Japan are. It's like like two years ago I spent eight hundred dollars to go to Japan. This year it's gonna be like fifteen hundred if I want to go. It's crazy. What the fuck? Oh yeah, bunk, hmm. bunk. You should be glad you didn't watch. That was that was sad. What happened? Okay, Chris was his winners. He beat Samford in winners finals like three to two, I think three to one. And then Samford went. He got out of the losers, so grand finals. Chris was a two one. Samford came back and beat, win the first set. Second set, Samford wins three zero. I think Chris won like two rounds. It was like oh my god. Downloaded. Uh, what is that in the background, man? I think that's Guard Crush on his uh, computer.
All right, people. Um, I guess uh, that'll be it for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> but thanks for coming on, um, Face NC, uh, for you know coming out and talking about Third Strike, and I think you did an excellent job of explaining um, why Third Strike is a um, is so close to some of our best players' hearts, and so. Hopefully you guys will buy it, even if you don't really plan on playing it for very long. Buy it, support GGPO, support the scene. Um, it can only get better from here. Uh, we've come this far, we can't stop now. I mean, so buy it, play it, and then, you know, we'll look for great things in the future. Yeah, man, definitely. Thanks a lot for having me on. I mean, uh, yeah, everyone play Third Strike, buy it, give it a chance. Uh, you know, who knows, you might find it's, you know, really fun for you. Uh... But, uh, yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. Whatever. Follow me on Twitter. I'm at FaceNC, like North Carolina. Um, and, yeah, that's it. Thanks. All right. Peace. Take it easy, yeah. folks. Thank you. You should come on with chin dog ones. <laughs> <laughs> Too much whiteness. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, fellas.